top of the morning. We're glad you guys are here. Uh, we sure are. We are uh, anticipating having a wonderful time. We're glad those of you that have joined us here uh, uh, live all over the world, and we're glad that you're here. I mean, who knows, right? Um, let's see. We uh, What we want to do is just begin with prayer, and we will go from there. So let's bow together. Father, we thank you for this, uh, this uh, beautiful day in so many ways. Uh, Father, we want to enjoy you um, again. And Lord, we, we want you to, we are, we're asking that you would uh, be pleased um, by our heart, uh, by our desire for you. And uh, Lord, we're, uh, there are so many needs that all of us have in this place, and uh, uh, man, I'm telling you, uh, the world uh, is in a, a state of confusion, and we don't want to be a part of that confusion, um, we want to, with your help, anticipate the future, look forward to, to everything in the future, uh, Father, we uh, we love you, and you, sir, are the best thing that has ever happened in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name.
all this confusion around us, we know we've got, he's got, we're in his hand, and it's good. It's all good, right? Uh, today, I just want to talk about oneness of us all. You know, we talk about a lot of differences within us, and all of us have different fingerprints. We have all different kinds of skills and abilities and, and ways that we do things. But there is a oneness about us. And that oneness about us is in our, through our faith and the spiritual divineness of our Lord and Savior. Uh, I want to quote from uh, John 17, 21, that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us. Each Sunday, we get to participate in communion. Becoming oneness with God is what I consider this with because we're taking in the very body and the blood of Jesus Christ. The body which he shed for us on the cross and the blood which is washing away our sins. And let us begin with that night, he took the bread, he broke it, and blessed it, passed it around to them and said, eat of this, this is my body shed for you. And then after the supper, he poured the wine. And he passed that among each and every one of them and said, here, drink of this. This is my blood, which will wash away your sin. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the ability to take communion this morning, the honor of the sacrifice. Father, strengthen us by this communion that stands behind this table. Thank you, Father, for the many blessings that you give to us daily and the blessings, blessings given to this church and all the churches throughout the world that worship you and spread your word. May you bless each of us. Let your hand of protection be on each and every one throughout the week. In Jesus' name I pray.
Now to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write this. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. Now what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength. Yet, you've kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you've kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial. And that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Now hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. And never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from God. And I will also write on them my new name. So whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches.
blessed us and show us your mercy, Father. And I thank you for that mercy, Father. And just please be with us just always, Father. I know that you're always there, and I just appreciate that so very much. And just please just continue to put your hand upon us, Lord, and, and put your hand upon Don as he comes to read your word, Father. And just let us be knowing, Lord, that you are king of all kings, Lord of all lords, Father. Thank you so much, Father. In your name we pray, Lord. thankful, feel like I've just been to church and I enjoyed that a lot, more than you guys know. Um, you guys are a real blessing to us. I've got several people who are actually out today because they've been exposed to COVID and we've got other folks that have been tested positive, but we're delighted that you guys are here. Just absolutely, absolutely delighted. Um, the church is really God's intention to bless the world, and it's never been about governments, uh, except government has cer certain responsibilities that God has given them, but our, our, our hope is not in them, and I hope you know that. Uh, I hope we don't, uh, you know, uh, that our emotions would, would also show that. Whether it's anger, or whether it's disappointment, or whether it's happiness, or whatever, that it's uh, certainly not because we think that some man that's here on this earth can somehow uh, bring hope to this nation, because it's not the way it's going to be. Um, the church, man, uh, is really God's intention to bless the world. The church is the place where... He desires to be seen, um, whether it's through our praise of him, our dependence on him, whether it's because of our love for one another, uh, whatever it is, God intends for the church to be that, uh, you know, that pillar, that example uh, that the world can uh, find him, you ready, through us. The world can find him through us. I was telling a couple of the guys earlier that I really had a cool experience this week. It was a, marvelous, and I get to continue, Lord willing, this person will be in the hospital for a little while. And uh, she uh, uh, told me that she had never uh, been to church, and she had never picked up a Bible. And so it was a lot of fun to be able to kind of start, you know, in Genesis and kind of lead through. And she's a precious young lady that really wondered if she could even be accepted in a church uh, because of her lack of knowledge. And uh, uh, so, in fact, she intends to come and visit us here uh, when she can. But... Uh, if you notice with these churches, and, and really it's, it's worth your time, your time, to go back and read through these seven churches. This is the sixth one. We'll, we'll do the last one, uh, Lord willing, next week. But uh, to go back and look through them, where he, what he does is he starts with telling them what he sees them doing right. And then he says, but I got this. You, I want you to deal with this. I wonder, really, and maybe you wonder with me, I, wonder, I hope you will, what would, God, what would Jesus say to our church right now? If you were to come in here, I can tell you, first of all, uh, that he would be in love with every person that he was speaking to, and, and that, in fact, is what's going on right now. He'd be in love with every person that he's speaking to. But what would he say that, that, uh, that we're doing right? And what would, he, what, would be, what would be the areas that he would correct us in? Um, and, and this particular church, what's interesting is, is that he, he doesn't talk about anything that needed to be corrected uh, with the church. Um, it's kind of a cool deal. Um, I am gonna, I'm going to emphasize the, the title of the message because, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. Uh, those that endure to the end are going to get the greatest reward. You say, well, there's a lot of rewards in the Bible, at least six or seven different rewards, and probably not a not an exhaustive list of the different awards that he's going to give. Probably not. Uh, 
but the greatest reward is him. And so just like God said to Abraham, I am your exceeding and great reward. So that's the greatest reward is him, no doubt about that. Uh, but he's also going to give other rewards, and the Bible teaches us that we're just going to lay him back at his feet because he's the one who did it through us anyway. Because we're going to go, man, I didn't do that. You did it. <laughs> right? That's what's going to happen. And uh, but let's stop and think about the church for just a moment. We look at things from a biblical standpoint. Uh, uh, you know, as a, as, as a teaching pastor here, uh, you know, you would expect certain things. One would be that uh, I certainly would use the scripture as our authority and not me, uh, because there really is no uh, person here that's the authority. It's, it's, uh, it is Christ. He's the head of this church, and he's the head of every church that names him as Lord, and that's what all of us need to be keep looking toward, and hopefully as a pastor, you, you, you end up seeing how great he is. That's the end goal there. Um, we have a chairman of the board in this, in this church, and his responsibility is to make sure the organization continues to function well. Um, uh, he, he, has, he has authority here, but the, the authority is still Christ. We, uh, we have elders and deacons, and the elders, quite frankly, uh, are those who are to help take care of the spiritual needs. The deacons are to help uh, preserve unity within the body. And that's, what they're, that's, that's, that's an obvious thing that we find in Scripture. So hopefully what I'm doing, hopefully what I end up doing for us is that we, we, we uh, uh, find a deeper relationship, a deeper walk with Christ so that we come to a higher plane. <laughs> That makes sense? That we get closer to him as a result of us spending our time together like this. Um, and so I want to deal with several things here, and I'm pretty excited about this. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about in this passage is this. That the one, I need you to hear me, the one who controls everything, is the one who also sets us free. I want to read this with you. The one who controls everything is also the one who sets us free so that we're not bound by man's traditions and we are free to live unto him, that we are free not to be controlled by sin anymore, but we're free to walk with him in his holiness not ours. We're free. It's a marvelous thing. Um, I have to tell you that that heaven. One of the one of the great desires I have is not only seeing him and being with him and listening to him, uh, but I have to tell you, being in a place where it's pure and holy and I don't wrestle with sin anymore. I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to that. Um. Here in this passage, it's so good, uh, man, how, how, how Jesus says, look, these are the words of him, I'm in verse 7, these are the words of him who is holy and true and holds the keys of David. In other words, I am the one who controls the kingdom. Uh, watch this, what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. <laughs> you see? Uh, in other words, in fact, let me continue, and I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut, and I know that you have little strength. We'll talk about that in a moment. So it makes it really clear that he's the one who, uh, you know, he's got the keys of the kingdom. He's the one who's going to open doors for you, and he's the one who's going to close doors for you. Uh, there's a lot of examples that I can give for, to you personally. I remember one time uh, there was an opportunity of ministry, and I kind of wanted to go. I kind of really wanted to go. It's a, uh, some of you know and heard of Harris Chapel Baptist Church. I know some of you guys have. And I wanted to go there one time, man. And I went, and, and uh, we, were, we were talking to them. They came and heard me speak, and, 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 and it was kind of going along. 
And, uh, and really, and they, were, they were really interested in Vicki because she could play the piano real well. In fact, it's almost like they weren't even talking to me anymore. They're talking to her to find out, you know, what else she could play on the piano. And uh, so nonetheless, uh, you know, we didn't end up going there. And I know it was her fault. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, 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 but the Lord opens doors and he closes doors. Okay, and, and, and certainly what we're talking about here, the doors specifically, listen to me, the, stores, the, 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 the doors specifically that we're talking about is kingdom doors. We're talking about those things of opportunity for ministry, but it's not just that because he controls everything. And we'll talk about that again in just a moment. But uh, he opens doors and he closes doors. And had he opened that door, I wouldn't have had the opportunity that I had at the Colt Baptist Church, which I gained a family there, and uh, I was actually at a point in my life where it was like, because of, because of problems and sometimes that goes on in churches, I was like, man, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore, Lord, and he, and he brought me there, and I had a marvelous experience there, which allowed me to see that, that this was what the Lord wanted me to do because I had two other experiences that were like, really, is that how churches operate? And, and so, nonetheless, had I not had that experience, knowing some other things, uh, a lot of things could have changed. I remember one time uh, we decided we were going to go to seminary in California, and so we packed up all our stuff, kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies, only I was going the other way. And we packed up all our stuff in the U-Haul and got out there and things. I mean, we were, I was going to go to seminary out there, really good seminary. And then the door just closed while we were out there. And so, so we came back and brought all of our stuff and, you know, just kind of unpacked it again. And, and, uh, and, and, and I got to tell you that, uh, you know, the Lord just closed that door. And, you know, we just went on a vacation for six weeks with all of our furniture. You ever done that? You've never done that? It's really an experience. You need to try it just one time. Uh, but nonetheless, we got back, and, and next thing we know, we're down in Fort Worth, Texas. And it was a great experience, one that I wouldn't have had. had he not closed that door and then opened that one. It's amazing what he does. He closed, Listen, guys, sometimes he just closes them shut. There's nothing you're going to do except trust him, even though it didn't work out exactly as you had planned. I love it. In Psalm 139, 5, it says, uh, he, uh, remember he's talking about this. He's going, God, you know all my thoughts. You know them before I do. You know what I'm going to say before I do. You know when I get up. You know when I sit down. You know everything. He says, and he, it says in verse 5, it says, you hem me in behind and before. Uh, you know, or, or, or you can even, if, hey, uh, Brand, if you'll bring up uh, Acts uh, uh, 17, 25 to 28. Let's read through that. And he is, uh, he, God, is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. Did you catch that? Watch. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. Watch. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their land. In other words, where you live, ladies and gentlemen, what time of, you know, you, you're, you're, uh, what, what year and gen, uh, generation and century and decade and all that. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live, move, have our being. And some of your poets have said we are his offspring. So, the point is, is that, uh, that God really does control everything. He's the one that opens doors and closes doors. And, and it, it, I don't know about you, but that's pretty darn exciting. That, can I say darn? Uh, I, just, I just realized I said that. But the point is, is, that, is that, that he's the one who does this, man. And you know what? Uh, I know sometimes we're trying to make doors open that we want to happen and, and, and get doors closed and, we want, and all of that, but... Come down to it, man. He's the one who does all this stuff. I mean, the jobs that you have, the opportunities you've had, I'm telling you, are all of him. You're, you're the, there's probably about a 99.9% .9 chance you're exactly where you're supposed to be, right this minute. And I love that. So we can go on and on about this. In fact, uh, go ahead, if you would, for just a moment, uh, uh, Brent, and bring up Proverbs 
16, 3 and 4 and 9, it goes like this. Submit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Verse 4 says, the Lord works out everything to his proper end, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Look at this, verse 9. In their heart, and in, in, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. I don't know about you, but that's fantastic. And that's fantastic that God is that intricately involved in our lives. And I love that. I love that, man. Um, so I want to say this again. Uh, the one who controls it all is also the one who set you free. Uh, Galatians 5 1 says, For freedom he set you free, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's not like you're bound up by him by any means. He just got you in the right place. He's got you in these right opportunities. Ultimately, what's the ultimate end? And this, we know this. You ready? It is that he knows where you need to be a light. He knows where you need to be to be this light for somebody else. Because ultimately, I, you, I need you to hear me. We're not here for us. We're here for his honor. It. Secondly, what I want to talk about is this. You ready? You bring that up for us, Brent. Second point goes like this. When we are most proud of him, it will never compare to his rejoicing over you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. In other words, I'm proud of it. Not ashamed. Remember what, what Jesus says in Mark chapter 8? He says, he says, look, if you're going to be ashamed of me, my word, then I'm going to be ashamed of you before my Father. See, God wants to bring you to a place where you've discovered him, where you've discovered who he really is. And once you've discovered who he really is, you're going to be proud the rest of your life that you even know him, that you even get to say his name. The, close, the, the, the more you get to know him, man, there's going to be no shame whatsoever. You're going to be proud that you belong to him. That's what's going to happen. And you know what the scripture says? I'm going to show you this in real I'm excited to show you this. But uh, the, the scripture says things like this in, in Hebrews, I think it's verse chapter 2, verse 11. It says, man, he says, I am proud to call you brethren and sisters, right? I'm proud. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Look at that. Both the one who makes people holy, Jesus, and, the, and those who are made holy, you and me, are of the same family. <laughs> Watch this. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Wow. Guys, don't, don't take that as for everybody else. I'm talking about you. He's not ashamed to call you that. Watch this in Revelation. Let's go back to this because it's going to blow your mind. I'm telling you. Look at the end of verse 8, for example. It says, uh, I love this. Watch this. Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. He likes that. Watch this. Look at the end of verse 9. It goes like this. Um, watch this. I will make them come and fall down at your feet. These folks who are of the synagogue of Satan, uh, we'll talk about that another time. Watch this. I'll have them fall down at your feet and acknowledge what? That I have loved you. In other words, I want everybody to know that I love you. Is that crazy or what? In fact, in Ephesians, I see it in chapter 2 that you and I are actually going to be in, on display before uh, the angels we are going to be on display as, as uh, objects of his mercy. We're going to be on display as objects of his mercy. Okay? And uh, he's going to be bragging on us. He's going to be bragging over what's happened with you. Now watch, look at this. Let's go back. Look at verse 12 now. Chapter 3, verse 12. Watch this. It says, him who overcomes. Now you know who overcomes, by the way? It's pretty simple. 1 John chapter 5 says, He who overcomes by faith. By faith. Watch. 
To him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. In other words, you're going to be there forever. Never again will he leave it. Watch. I'm going to write my name on him. I'm going to write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that's going to come down out of heaven, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. Watch this. And I will also write on him my new name. <laughs> You understand? He's proud of us. He's, he's ecstatic over us. In fact, let me read this passage real quick to you just because I want to make this clear. In Zephaniah chapter 3, it says that God is mighty to save. He, he has great delight in you. Watch this. He brings you peace. He brings you peace by his love. You ready? He brings you peace by his love. Just keep thinking about that. He brings you peace by his love. And then it goes on and it says, and he was going to rejoice over you with singing. <laughs> you know how you, and, how you and I sing? I mean, sometimes, man, we're captivated by singing to him and singing about him. We're, we're sometimes we're captivated. We're, we're enthralled with this experience. I want you to know that he's going to sing over you because his love for you and me is that profound. And what's that say? He's going to, this, this blows my mind. This blows my mind. He's going to write on us. I don't know exactly what all that means. I just know he's so proud of us. He's going to write on you my new name. Your new name? What is that? I don't know. But watch this. We know that his name is Jesus, which is Savior. That's marvelous all by itself. Just stop and think about the name Jesus being Savior, number one. Number two, he's called Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's profound all by itself. He's going to write a new name. You know what that says to me? Is that he's going to write a name, and we're going to learn something even more profound about him. <laughs> we're going to go, oh my gosh. We're going to learn more about him. telling you. He's not ashamed to call you brothers and sisters. He doesn't want us to be embarrassed by him. And the more you get to know him, oh my gosh, to say his name is like what an honor to say his name. You see? You see? Um, in uh, 2 Timothy 1.8 Brandon, if you'll bring that up for me, and I'll, and I'll go to my last point in just a moment. Now, 2 Timothy 1.8, it says this. Uh, do not be ashamed about, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Um, I'm going to say this to you real clear. Uh, this, I need you to hear this. You're not going to become one of the most popular people if you're going to keep naming his name. If you're going to keep naming his name as he's the one that you love more than anything. I'm just going to tell you, you're not going to get more popular. Especially as we continue, as this darkness continues to be, become pervasive in the land in which we live. Jesus is just not going to be. I mean, there are there's a lot of statements that, that the Bible is uh, bigot, you know, bigoted, and there's a lot of things that's racist, and all these kinds of things. I'm telling you, these things are, are coming to the forefront. Um, I'm on Twitter, and uh, it's the only, only social media I'm on, and, uh, you know, if you're on there, look me up. Uh, I don't say anything on there. It's really funny. Uh, I, I just follow, I try to follow, let me make it real clear, I try to follow just Christian folks because I just want to hear stuff. I just, that's, that's all I want. You know, I don't, I don't comment on any, oh, I guess I have, I've, I've thanked somebody for something they've said, but I don't, like, put out a post of any kind. And, uh, and, I, and I retweet people's really good stuff. That's what I do. And uh, there's this girl on there that I've, I've been noticing and a lot of people are following. By the way, I follow like 3,000 some people and I, only 900 people follow me. So, you know, you know, 
I think I have 900. No, I don't think I have 900. I don't know what I have. But uh, anyway, um, I don't know why they were calling me back. I mean, I'm a nice guy, you know. But uh, there's this girl on there who is uh, who's rather broken because uh, she was violated as a young lady. Um, and uh, you never would guess it by looking at the picture, you know. You just never would guess, you know, by looking at somebody's picture, right? I mean, you think, gosh, this girl, yeah, you know, but, but she was violated as a young girl by her dad. And she actually gave birth to a child from her dad. And uh, uh, this little girl uh, really struggles. Okay, now I want you to hear what I'm about to say. The only thing she really feels that she can hang on to is, is Christ himself. And I got to tell you that the Lord's going to take all of us to that place. All of us in this room. But she really, she, she has an incredible inability to trust anybody. Anybody. And so, but these folks, you know, there's a lot of people on there that really encourage her. And it's really kind of cool. That's, that's like one of the places. And she said this. She said that her, 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 her father, you know, rejected her. Watch this. Even the church at that time. You ready? The church rejected her. Rejected her. And, but she knows that she's got a father. She has a father. Listen to me. And so here's, here's my point. Because there's a lot of injustice that goes on in the world. A lot of stuff and, and uh, uh, you know. I want you to know this is what I think about. When I think about people like that that grow up in a situation like that. I think, wow, God, how you are going to fill their life. How justice is going to prevail. Just like he talked about here. I'm going to take those guys who are of Satan, the synagogue of Satan, I'm going to tell them they are going to fall at your feet. Now watch, justice will prevail. Justice will prevail. His knowledge is incredible. He's the one who opens and closes doors. Last point I have, okay? So the first thing is the one who controls it all has set you free. Secondly, secondly, even in our greatest pride of him, doesn't even begin to compare of how he is going to rejoice over you. Doesn't even compare. Is that crazy or what? And that's why, you know, I, I, I try to encourage people, do you understand I got to tell you that that the judgment day is going to be far greater than you imagine. Don't misunderstand me. There there is a sense in which you and I, uh, you and I uh, look at that and we and, and we we deal with it with incredible reverence because the stuff that we did for ourselves is going to be burned away. The stuff that we did for Him is going to be. Rewarded. I mean, just things like you guys playing guitars and drum. I like that drum today. That was good. Just, I like it loud, man. I like that. Um, that day is going to come, and it's going to be an incredible, incredible experience. Last one I want to make. Brandon, if you'll bring that up. For those who remain standing, in the end, um, you'll also be the one, let me see, I'll read it from here. The one who remains standing has learned the secret that he never stood alone. Um, I want to look at one last passage with you, uh, Brandon, if you'll bring it up, and I'm just going to look at this one. It's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 to, 2 Timothy 4, 16 to 18. I'm going to uh, read that. That'll be my last passage I'm going to read to you, okay? Um, and I'll get to it in just a moment. The Bible is very clear that those who endure to the end, the same will be saved. I'm going to say that again. Those who endure to the end, the same will be saved. Okay? Don't, don't mistake that. Uh, the scripture talks about 
uh, people in the scripture who, who left. They left. They left. First John says they left because they never, never had him. I got to tell you, you know, I'm here not because I'm good. I'm talking about in the faith. I'm, I'm here not because I had, because I was strong. Um, I need you to know that it's important that you endure to the end. Sometimes you might be, you might be struggling along like the psalmist in Psalm 73. You might almost give up yourself. There, there are going to be times when you're going to become discouraged. There's going to be times. It's going to happen. You're going to go, man, you know, you're going to question stuff. It's all, it's all normal. It's all normal. Sometimes you're going to question your own salvation. I need you to know. That's normal. That's normal. But I want you to know that, that the reason why you will remain, the only reason why you will remain is because God never let go of you. I wanna, I, what I want to do is I want us to uh, go through that passage uh, right there together, okay? That one that we're looking at, and it goes like this. I'm going to read one last. It says, at my first offense, no one came to my support. I want, this is really good, uh, but everyone deserted me. This is Paul talking. May it, may, may it not be held against me. Would you love that? That's just the spirit of Jesus right there. But the Lord stood at my side. There he is. And gave me strength. Why is Paul making it? Because the Lord stood with him. So that through me the message might be fully proclaimed. God's got a purpose for you. And all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the, mouth, the lion's mouth. Watch this. That next verse. <clears throat> yep. That next one, I think. Yeah. There we go. Thanks, friend. The Lord will rescue me. What? From every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Right? Follow me? I'm going to be there. Why? Because the Lord has taken care of me. You can look back. He took care of you then. He's going to take care of you tomorrow. He's going to take care of you next week. He's going to take care. Of, he's going to be there. Just stand with me. The thing that you never want to let go of is what? Your faith. Listen to this, and, I'll, and, and I'm going to try to close. It says this. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Watch this. May your whole spirit, that, that which connects you to God, your soul, all of your emotions and feelings and body, all those be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. To the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. And so the just shall live by faith means that as I come, into Je I come to Jesus, I come by faith. I trust you. I trust in you, Jesus, not me. I don't have to look at myself. I just have to look to you. Because you offered the sacrifice. I have, I have my salvation in you and not in me. It's no, it's not in me. It's not in anybody else. It's in you, Jesus. And my walk every day is going to be continuing to follow you. And you're the one who's going to do it. It is not me. It is not me. First John 5 says, everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. Everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Can I talk for just a moment of close here? You ready? Job. Job went through a lot of stuff. Um, I want you to know that, that Job was a man. Listen. He was a praying man when everything was good. And he was a praying man when everything was bad. <coughs> Let's bow. 
Father, um, I love your word. I do believe that you set us free, and we're still learning about that. We're still experiencing that. Sometimes because of some things that we've been taught in the past, and sometimes because of our own thoughts, we, we get confused about freedom. We, we, don't, we don't know how free we really are. How that the world has been opened up to us of, uh, of peace. We just, don't, we just don't understand all of it, but I pray that you'll help us to understand our freedom. And Father, uh, help, help everyone here realize that, that as you work in our lives, and as you change us to become more like your son, that you become proud of us and you are like what you said to Jesus when you said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And because we are in him, you are pleased with us. <laughs> you are proud of us. You are proud to call us your own. Father, help every one of us in this room to not just, not just endure, but Father, help us to soar. Though there'll be times that we'll be, we'll be crawling, be times that we're stumbling, but Father, bring us to the place of soaring. Help us. Thank you for taking care of us. I pray this. In Jesus' name. Heads are bowed for a moment, just for a moment. We're going to sing together how he loves us. I hope that you believe that, and I hope the Holy Spirit will teach you that. Um, if Christ has never come into your life, you've never said, oh my goodness, I want this Jesus in my life. I want, I want him in my life. I, I would love to talk to you today. Call me, whatever. Talk. Come by, we can do, we can meet. God has spoken to you. Christian, man, I'm hoping that you come to know him in such a way that you'll never be embarrassed by his name again. That you'll never be ashamed of naming him as your Lord. No matter what's going on. I hope that's the case. You respond to him. We're going to sing together. Stand with me, would you? And sing.
Let me remind you of some great opportunities this week. Uh, this afternoon, 3 o'clock, we've got a board meeting, those that are on the board. Wednesday, we've got a great meeting uh, Wednesday night uh, at 6.30, where we're going to talk about uh, Saturate Jonesboro. And I believe that's a great opportunity for us to uh, show our love back with God of, of bringing in people into the various churches. I think that's a great idea. And so please come with us. And ladies, it's for y'all too. We mainly have men come to that meeting, but we'd love to have ladies there too at 6.30. And then uh, uh, next Sunday at 5 is when we start that process. We start. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we've had a great, great service today. Help us to uh, reflect upon it, walk with you, Lord, in the ways you want us to, and find those open doors, those open doors that best please you, because we know that will be the very best for us. We pray this for this church for its leaders, and for our direction. And we pray it through Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, and we say, Amen.